Hello and welcome to Fancy a Blather season two. I can't believe we've made it. We've made a new season. We've now been running for I think 12 weeks which is about three months so that is insane. Um, thank you so much to people that listened to season one. If you didn't go and check it out. It's still available. Some really good episodes on there and I guess a little bit of news. So we've had a little bit of a rebrand of the episode of the show sorry not the episode and basically the new tagline for the show is think the graham norton show but with a scottish host who is not that funny so i've become aware that i really love having guests on my episodes and different guests every week so this become more of a chat show podcast but um one that focuses on people who are making necessary changes in this world whether that is in their own personal life or on a large scale so i hope you look forward to joining me on following weeks to learn more from a myriad of guests and also I should add that now these main episodes will be going up on Saturdays rather than Thursdays. Small Talk will still be available on Wednesdays. I guess it splits up your week better for all your fancy of leather um, time that you need in your life obviously for all your fancy of leather content and I'm now back studying teaching. Crazy, crazy, crazy times so that's little personal update I guess I've moved to Aberdeen and I'm studying my PGD so I don't have a bunch of time at the week to record at the week during the week to record so that is why we are recording on Saturdays now so it's just easier for me to mix it in with my life I'm super excited about this first episode of the new season as this is our first ever book club episode so I did a little poll on the Fancy Blather Instagram which if you don't follow it it's at Fancy Blather I really highly suggest it check it out we do posts on there all the time polls stories etc etc and I wanted to know do people want a book club episode or do they want untold stories and we got hit with a 50-50 response so essentially what I'm doing is every first week of a month we will talk about the book that's been the book club for the month before if that makes sense so this is the book the book that we're talking about today where the crawdads sing by oh how do you say her name Delia Delia I think Delia Owens is um was our book for August and now that this is the first week of September we are talking about the book that we read last month so yeah follow along with us and so half of the episode will be talking about the book and the other half is going to be an untold story in some way linked to a character in the book I suppose someone that like is exists in real life but has similar qualities than one of the characters within the book so stay tuned for the second half where we we'll talk about and by untold stories obviously the stories are not actually untold otherwise I wouldn't have heard of them but like underrated I suppose stories but untold just sounds better so that is the aim of this episode but I suppose we'll just hop into our usual intro our usual intro will never change probably so I'll start off with my small wonder of the week so yeah as I said I recently moved to Aberdeen which has been amazing I actually love Aberdeen way more than I ever thought I would and I've made a friend at my window every day a seagull Um, it's fair to say that our friendship had a pretty turbulent beginning Um, my friend is named George I've named him George the seagull and he comes to my window every day I live on the ground floor he comes to my window every day and he goes well tap 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 on the window um essentially begging for food I don't feed him don't feed seagulls you shouldn't feed seagulls um they are very capable birds for getting food and they do spread a bit of disease so try not to feed them but he just comes and we just chat and I've flown so I just chat with George and I have to say that the small wonder of the week is George's persistence because he just comes every day and he'll stay even though he doesn't get food so honestly I think he just wants company and people are going to say sequels don't care about that and they're wrong George and I we've become good friends um so yeah George is my small wonder of the week. Um, yeah, so next up, what I'm engaging with. So this one is kind of linked, I suppose, to the episode. So what I'm engaging with at the moment is I'll obviously been looking for untold stories. And I found this really cool website, which I will have linked in the show notes. And the name of the website is offtheshelf.com. And they have this post that I was reading called She Heroes 
15 incredible stories of the coolest women you've never heard of so definitely check out that link and yeah I think their website in general is quite cool but that post in particular I was reading I didn't actually pick one of the women from that post for this week but maybe for another month I will pick them and then the other thing is I've been engaging with all-in-one educations Instagram that is actually where I find the person that I'm going to be speaking about this week in my stories in my story even and um I do advocacy work for them as well actually so I suppose I'm just a big fan all around but their Instagram is at all in one education UK and that's all like one word and all spelled as you'd expect so that is what I've been engaging with this week and I will also link their Instagram down below as always so normally I would do a poet not a poet sorry a poem of the week sometimes a poet I guess but this week I thought I'd do something a little bit different I'm going to read part of the book that we're going to be talking about and it actually in this book this part of the book the book is talking about poetry so I thought oh, that all ties really beautifully together so yeah I'm going to read this excerpt and as I said before this book is called Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens and if I guess if you have a book and you want to read along it's very teacher of me to say um it's on page 48 so yeah let's hop into it biology's good I like it but we're doing poetry in English class can't say I like it much we each got to read one out loud you used to recite some but I don't remember them I got a poem for you, son, Scupper said. My favourite, The Cremation of Sam McGee's by Robert Service. Used to read it out to y'all. Was your mama's favourite? She laughed every time I read it. Never got tired of it. Tate looked down at the mention of his mother, pushed his beans around. Scupper went on. Don't go thinking poetry's just for sissies. There's mushy love poems for sure, but there's also funny ones. Lots about nature. War, even. Whole point of it. They make you feel something. His dad had told him many times that the definition of a real man is one who cries without shame, reads poetry with his heart, feels opera in his soul, and does what's necessary to defend a woman. Scupper walked to the sitting room, calling back. I used to know most of it by heart, but not anymore. But here it is. I'll read it to you. He sat back down at the table and began reading when he got to this segment. And there sat Sam, looking cool and calm in the heart of the furnace roar. And he wore a smile you could see a mile and he said, Please close that door, it's fine in here, but I greatly feel you, fear you'll let in the cold and storm since I left Plumtree down in Tennessee. It's the first time I've been warm. Scupper and Tate chuckled. Your mum always laughed at that. They smiled, remembering. Just sat there a minute. Then Scupper said he'd wash up while Tate did his homework. Hi, Kirsty, just popping in here for our charity spot of the week. So this week I have picked the Scottish Book Trust and you can find them at www.scottishbooktrust.com or just scottishbooktrust.com without the www. And um, for those of you that don't know, the Scottish Book Trust are a charity that do work to help children and adults in Scotland to reach their potential through reading and writing. You can support them through spreading the word, donating. Um, they also have a book club and they have fundraising opportunities, obviously, and they actually also have learning and resources and things that you can like pieces from authors and different types of writing activities you can do and some stuff on reading and stories on their website so you can find out loads of really cool activities to do by yourself if that's something you're interested in or literacy activities for your children or for your pupils if you're a teacher or just things you fancy doing so learn more about the um books that exist and also the books that exist in literature and they have all nine events at the moment obviously they support libraries and do lots of other things and at the moment they've got a quite a big push on reading at home as of course that's quite big at the moment as libraries are not yet open I don't think so you can check them out on um, scottishbooktrust.com and I'll have their website in the bio so yeah enjoy the rest of this week's episode 
So yeah, that was a segment of the book that we're talking about this week, which again, I'll tell you for the last time, is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delight Owens. I loved this book, and I mean loved it. I feel like it really reformed my reading love, and it really reignited my my love with reading, which has definitely been a turbulent experience when I was, um, once I'd graduated from English literature, and film is my degree, as I think I just kind of gained a slightly toxic relationship with reading. And I'm super happy to say I'm back into reading and I love it. It's my favorite thing. I like to wake up early and do some reading and I like to read before bed for about an hour. And this book was so good that I went to bed the other day. Well, I, last time I checked the time, it was eight. And I didn't check the time. I've been trying to not check the time when I fall asleep because um, I think that's like a psychological thing. But anyway, I read the last 200 pages in one sitting because I couldn't put it down. I was so, so interested in this book and I could not stop reading. I didn't matter how tired I was, I had to finish the book because it just got so, so good. There was so much drama and it was just so, so I was on the edge of my seat the whole time, on the edge of my bed, I suppose. But it was, oh, I just, I couldn't put it down, which is to me always a sign of a great book. Um, so yeah, let's just go through some of my thoughts of the book. It's probably all a bit jumbled because I'm still adjusting to this book club, club way of doing it. But the book is about a girl called Kaya Clark who has been um, like abandoned by all of her family, kind of one by one, by her mother and then by her siblings and then eventually by her abusive father. And her abusive father is the cause of a lot of her family members leaving. And the book actually has a real theme of appreciation of nature and she lives in the marsh and um, she's called the marsh girl by the locals and then she meets a boy and they start having feelings for each other and it's very very romantic and then she meets another boy later on she basically gets screwed over by both of those men and then yeah later on there's a court case and things like that and honestly If you haven't read the book, I suggest probably clicking out here because I'm probably going to start saying spoilers. So if you haven't read yet, then click out here and listen to the rest once you've read because I don't want to, I'd hate to spoil the end of a book for you. So basically, those of you that have read will know, Kaya has this relationship with this popular guy in the town And then there's a he dies, which you do actually learn quite early in the book. And there's a court case at the end, and they're all accusing her. And it's such an interesting thing. And they're obviously all stereotyping her, generalizing her. And oh, just I find that so interesting. And I think something that's so interesting is that this book is set in the 50s and the 60s, set in that kind of time period. But these themes are still hauntingly contemporary today. The idea of generalizing and um, I don't know, classism, racism, things like that. There is some, because this is obviously a time when America is so segregated, and I just find that so like hauntingly contemporary. So that was something I really picked up on the book, which I thought was very interesting that Delia Owens pointed out. I think another thing that's super cool is the way that she describes nature and the poetic nature that she writes about nature, if that makes sense. And I didn't realise Delia Owens is a scientist and she worked in Africa and she has lived in kind of marsh-ish environment similar to Kyle Clark. So I thought it was so cool that she's basically, like has so much prior knowledge. And also I loved all of the facts I found out, like that birds have one ovary. What a cool thing to find out. Um, so I thought it was also cool that it made me become smarter by the end of the book, I suppose. <laughs> Um, I did, it is a, the jumping back and forth part of the book, I did like in terms of the crime fiction, but I did sometimes find it hard to follow and I did have to go back pages and check what year I was in. Maybe that's not something that bothers you, but sometimes I got got a bit lost as to what year we were in and what was the relevance. But as the book went on, I think it became more obvious how they were tied together and I think that's one of the magics of it is the mystery at the start that you're like what the heck's going on um yeah and I really love Kaya like she's a badass character and I love that she's not perfect everyone needs flaws and 
I really thought she was an incredibly well-written character and I was a big fan and of course big Tate fan he um he did screw up but he made up for it and I appreciate that um and I think it is interesting how until Kaya's in the jail everything around her is described as so mesmerizing and the town isn't really described as something that's so mesmerizing and that obviously is a great contrast that she's trying to bring out because naturally within film and things like that is kind of the opposite way and because she's the marsh girl you'd expect her to be dirty and things like that but she's always painted rather um yeah rather wonderfully I suppose but I'm not really articulating this very well and also it's part of Reese Witherspoon's book club love that for her love that for Daya Owens and it's going to be a film and I'm really excited about that but I am also a bit nervous as to how they are going to make the film work and how it's going to be good and I hope they don't ruin it that would really hurt my feelings but I am looking forward to the film um what else have I got written here oh yeah so the ending can we just let's just get into the ending because the ending really threw me into Mars I was just so impressed the ending just killed the game was one of the best endings I've ever read personally I loved that that Owens chose to round off the story to really tie together every single loose end and not leave the reader wondering things because I really hate a cliffhanger personally yes it's a marketing ploy um yes sometimes it's a narrative decision and it means you can pick the ending but I like closure and I really like that Owens gave us the closure we needed in this book. She literally told us what happens until the day Kaya dies, like decades later. And that is what I'm here for in books. And I suppose if you didn't want that, you could just stop reading before the last five pages. So I really appreciate that. But the ending has you on the edge of your seat until the final sentence. When I tell you I was shocked within the last page, I tell no lie. Kaya did it what the I mean good on her to be honest he raped her that's self-defense um but I was so shocked that she decided to reveal that she'd done it right at the very very last second I think that's iconic and I'm really here for that um what else yeah it gives you the future that you want Kaya to have I was so happy that she got her version of a happy ending it's kind of a bittersweet ending though isn't it because she dies quite young and that's sad and they never have a kid and that really hurt me I was like oh she deserves she she deserves a family um and she's the poet that was my favorite part as a poet myself all the poems we've been reading throughout by this character and I didn't really understand why they were there but I thought they were nice poems she was the poet like oh that is genius like oh I love that so much insane Owens is an icon big fan I've just written on my word doc about this book imagery 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 in capital letters and I think that really just sums up how well the book described things and how much I was here for it just really really well done the way you could picture the marsh was just so so incredible her artwork like all had such great images and really did come across like a, quite a cinematic narrative but I'm sorry that it's going to be ruined on the film and yeah as Owen said it's about trying to make it in a wild place and that is literally what Kaya achieves she achieves more than anyone in that time could ever achieve she survives in amongst the marsh in amongst the animals she learns how to live with animals instead of against them I think that's a super interesting like environmental stance I guess as well because that's really interesting that she learned to live with the environment with the community of animals better than with people which I just think is an interesting thing to say um there's so much more I could say about this book if you haven't read it I really recommend that you do sorry if I spoiled it for you but you should read it anyway and honestly I would read it just for the imagery it is so well written and Kaya Clark is such an interesting character and I really enjoy the fact that she exists and I love the um relationships that she has with Jumpin and his wife Mabel and I think that that is such a beautiful relationship 
when John Payne passes away and even though she doesn't go to the funeral for obvious reasons because she has been because the court case has happened but she was exonerated but still she didn't really want to exist in the town because they've like, screwed her over so much and I just love that um that relationship and how they worked so well together and how he was such a great father figure for her and yeah I really was here for it and her relationship with Mabel and when she gets her first period that is such a great thing to be writing about and to help kids understand and I never even thought about it personally actually how difficult it must be to experience that as somebody who doesn't have anyone to talk to and doesn't really know what's happening and um big fan all round of Delia Owens and honestly I'm gonna read like all of her other work that I can find and I'm so impressed by this book and I am not surprised that it became a bestseller so quickly so if you haven't read it please read it um if you have read it let me know what you thought what were the themes that really interested you for me it was definitely the um surviving the wilderness like the idea of like I suppose like the community of the wild being actually more civilized than the community of the town in a way and how we always paint ourselves as civilized but actually the animals are more civilized and I just find the parallel environments and things so interesting and I'd love to know what everyone else thought and what their opinions were and how you think how you felt about the book and if you enjoyed it um this book 10 out of 10 loved it I'm so here for it and how did you feel about the ending? Because I feel like some people might not like that ending, but I was so here for that ending. And I honestly think good on her because Chase deserved to die, in my opinion. And really it was self-defense. And the fact that he raped her is so disgusting and messed up and that people saw that and didn't do anything and just left her. Also here for the lawyer, I can't remember his name right now, but the pro bono lawyer that like, says he's going to be her lawyer even though she's a public defender and defends her when she's like given up on defending herself that was really incredible and I loved that because I was like well there is still good people in the world and um yeah really quick read and just really enjoyed it and that is about all I have to say about this month's episode this month's episode this month the our August book where the crawdads sing so for future episodes I'd love to have you guys come on and talk a little bit about your opinions of the book if possible I'll try and get the author to come that would be insane if I could find authors of the books that we're reading to come on and have a wee interview with them um, and I'd love to have people give their own opinions of the book and I can include that in the episode in some way and we can communicate about it a little bit more so there'll be a forum post up about the way the crowd I'd say sing on our website www.fancybeller.com and I'd love for you guys to write in it and tell me what you thought of the book and if you why you enjoyed it if you enjoyed it if you didn't enjoy it why didn't you enjoy it what themes were prevalent to you why are they prevalent to you um if you talked about it in a book club because that's cool and um yeah all those things and then obviously there'll be a post about this episode on our Instagram so you can comment on that what you thought of the book too so now we are going to kick into our untold stories section of this month's episode so this one as I said near the start of the episode I found this post on all in one education UK which on their Instagram which is at all in one education UK and um this woman that we're talking about is called Nur Inayat Khan he was a Muslim British spy in World War II serving in the Special Operations Ex- Executive Agency. Um, and we're just going to talk about her story. And if you want to read more about it, definitely check out their post or Google her. I'll have tons of links for you to learn more about her. This part of the episode is very much inspired by Katie Bellotti's podcast. And if you don't know her podcast, it's called Thick and Thin. And you should really check it out. I'm a massive fan of her podcast. And yeah really great listenership maybe some people will listen to that will listen to mine too I really love her podcast and how she tells these cool stories and hopefully I can do some justice to these stories so the reason I picked Noor Inyat Khan as the person I wanted to talk about an untold story I wanted to talk about for this month is that she is just such a badass woman who is killing the game and is so underrated in a way that's similar to Kaya in the way that she um 
I don't know, just like did what was necessary and kind of did it without any credit and things like that. So I guess I'll go a little bit more into how I think they're aligned later on once I've told the story. So we're just going to kick off this, with the story. So as I said already, um, she was a Muslim British spy in World War II serving in the Special Operations Executive Agency. So her story, like many of the female agents and other Muslim troops who fought for the British in World War II, isn't widely taught in schools. And um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it so that you can learn about it today. So Nur Inyat Khan was born in Moscow on January 1st in 1914. She was a special agent, a special operations executive agent in occupied France during World War II. She was the first female wireless operator to be sent to aid the French resistance and was known in the field under the code name Madeleine. Madeleine, sorry, because it's spelled differently. So who was Nur Enyat Khan? Khan's mother was American and her father was a Sufist mystic and musician from a noble Indian Muslim family. After the outbreak of World War II, the family moved to London and Paris, where Khan studied child psychology at the Sorbonne and music at the Paris Conservatoire. She has a brief career as a poet and a children's author, love that, before fleeing to London after Nazi occupation. Although pacifist, Khan was keen to help the war effort against Nazis, against Nazis Nazi tyranny. She joined the Women's Auxiliary Air Force in 1940 and was later sent to train with the SOE as a radio operator. French speaking with some wireless tele telegraphy skill already, Khan was to tooted, toted, as an excellent candidate to spy in France, but some of her trainers were uncertain about her abilities. She was considered unathletic, naive, and gentle and tended to give too much information and exercises. So I think this is one thing for me that really sticks out as a similarity between Nur and Kaya, as um, Kaya Clark is like kind of, it's kind of an opposite thing, I guess. She's represented as somebody that was really quite, I don't know, violent and aggressive due to living in the marsh and being part of the marsh people. But actually she's a super sensitive um, and gentle person and Khan has had the opposite experience where she's actually more capable of things than people realize and she's never accepted as somebody who's able to do the badass things that she does. So one instructor wrote that she confesses that she would not like to have to do anything two-faced, somewhat a necessity for a spy. So some also thought her to be physically unsuitable, suggesting that her skin color would make it hard for her to disappear into crowds unseen. However, she was extremely keen, determined, skilled at wireless operation and above all, utterly committed. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I mean, technology problems. <laughs> In June 1943, Cannes landed in northern France, joining the Prosper network of spies. Although most of this network were killed or captured shortly afterwards by the Gestapo, and despite being offered the chance to return to Britain, Cannes remained in France, committed to her mission, evading capture, and sending intelligence back to Britain. Like, how badass, what a cool woman. She was like, no, no, I don't want to go home. I'm here to do a job. I'm going to do my job. Naive. I think not. In October in 1943, she was betrayed to the Gestapo either by a French double agent or a civilian. That must be so complicated being an agent and there's double agents. Oh, I'm, I'd be so terrible. I can't even play poker with a straight face. She was taken to SD headquarters in Paris where she was interrogated. She refused to confess any details of her mission, even under torture, and attempted escape three times almost succeeding in November 1943 when she fled over the Paris rooftops. That is so insane. Wow, she is so cool. I love this woman. However, she was recaptured and upgraded to highly dangerous. Khan was transferred to, oh, how do you say this? Phosphorism prison in Germany, where she was kept chained in solitary confinement and tortured for information which she never gave up about all these people that were like oh she's so sensitive she's naive must be kicking themselves right now like hello she's been tortured so many times she's in solitary confinement which has been 
proven psychologically to really destroy a person and she's still not giving up any information wow this courage was in vain however the gestapo found her notebooks oh no that's really bad oh no and we're able to use the information inside them to send false messages as her oh this is messed up back to the british during luring other soe agents right into their hands they trapped them with her notebooks oh that's so rude obviously it's a lot more than rude but also i'd be so angry that's my notes how dare you in september 1944 age 29 she's so young i didn't realize she was so young aged 29 so she would have been even younger wow that's insane wow tan was transferred to dachu concentration camp where she was immediately executed no she was posthumously awarded the george cross and the french Cro oh, I'm so sorry, my French is really bad. Cro de Guerre and was the first Indian origin woman honored with a blue plaque at her home in Taverton St. Street, London. What an icon. I love that. Um she died at 29. I can't even phantom living that life of obviously you never lived through the World War. I'm very grateful for that. So why is Nur Khan important near in yet Khan important? Nur Inyut Khan can be studied on classes on World War II women and World War II espionage. And people can visit her blue plaque and the bronze bust of her in Garden Square Gardens in London. So if you want to check out her stuff, learn a little bit more about her, go there and respect her for being a badass, cool woman, head to George Square Gardens in London and check her out. And also let's spread the word about this woman who killed the game. So Nur Inya Khan, this is insane. I can't believe that she did all that. That is so, so cool. And another badass woman, just like Kaya Clark. So that was my untold story for this month. In future months, I will have other people like Nur Inya Khan who deserve for their stories to be represented. And yeah, I'll try and find out more information for you on those. And I'll definitely have more links so you can read more about her if you're interested. Um, so I guess before we end off this week's episode, I'm going to tell you what our book club of this month is. This is September, so the episode for it will go up the first week of October. So our book for this month is called Women Don't Owe You Pretty. So we voted on this on the Instagram. So again, like follow us on Instagram so you can vote on the book club. And it's called Women Don't Owe You Pretty by Florence Given. So that is what we're reading this month. And I'm so excited. I've heard incredible things. People seem to be very into this book and it's fairly new. And I can't wait to read about it and talk to you all about it. So stay tuned to hear all about that book next month. And I guess... that's it because the, obviously what I'm reading is our book club for next month so thank you so much for listening stay tuned for more episodes every Saturday with me and a guest or of course if it's the first week of the month just me chatting by myself maybe with an author and stay tuned to check out small talk on Wednesdays at some point <laughs> I don't know any day any time on a Wednesday it might go up with my co-host Naomi Howell Stephen and sometimes with some special guests so thank you so much for listening to this week's episode and don't forget to check us out on Instagram at Fancy Blather or check out our website www.fancyblather.com I'd love to know what you thought of the book so please head to our forum or comment on our most recent post to learn all about that so thank you so much bye